coming for part two. Oh boy. I have this camera perched somewhere. I hope it stays. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, this is time to put the um, tomato paste in. Okay, I tell you. So, tomato paste, you know, I got a generous amount. Okay, I'm gonna mix it. Oh Lord, let it stay up there. <laughs> so the goat had a lot of um, oil that got expressed so I took some of this off and threw it away because I don't want my food to be too greasy okay so we want to have enough oil to cook but not too much because I don't like when I'm eating a legume to see that on the side of it it's so greasy mm. I went somewhere when they were cooking some vegetables and I saw that all that grease. That's a turn off for me, unfortunately. All right, so we're gonna put our eggplant in. I have thrown some thymes in there, but then we're really gonna put a bouquet garni in here. I don't know if I have a whole uh, uh, scotch bonnet we do the same thing too. Your bouquet garni, you could put cilantro or parsley uh, with thyme, and you can even put a couple of bay leaves in there. It's just to add flavor. Okay, so we're definitely gonna put some water in here, but knowing how much water is usually important because you don't want to put so much water that when it's because these kind of vegetables, when they cook, they release some water too. So keep that in mind. So let's make a bouquet garni. So if you're doing any kind of soups, anything with liquid, go ahead and make a bouquet. It will improve your flavor. Give it a kick. All right. Because you know, the reason you do that is that it's a lot easier to fish it out at the end, right? So let me rinse the cilantro. And I have the thyme. Let me get some bay leaves. And we're gonna tie it together. I don't have fresh bay leaves, but these work just as well for me. I think I bought, I think I bought this whole bag at the Jamaican store for like maybe $1.99 or something. I mean, that is a steal. You know, dry spices, they kind of hold their shape and their flavor when they're dry. So you don't have to worry that you're not gonna get the, um, flavor that you want. Yep. Okay, here we go. Bouquet garni. You're tying it. Okay. We're gonna put some water. Let me see if I have a pepper. Oh, I have some, um, I have some jalapeno. I can add some jalapeno at the end, but oh, I do, I do, I do. So let's see. Yeah. It looks like it's getting 
Um, maybe not because it's not so good. If I open it, all the uh, the seeds are gonna get in here. It's gonna mess up my taste. It's gonna make it too hot. So I'll use a jalapeno at the end. But if you have scotch bonnet, you can put one or two whole one in here. So okay, we're gonna put a little bit of water in here. Okay, and we're gonna let it cook. Got a medium heat. You don't want it to be too. You don't want it to cook too fast. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to cook our cauliflower rice. So I'm going to take this down. We're going to go over here. All right. Yep. That's going to be... All right. gonna use this pan there we go oh my goodness okay I said I wanted to use either green beans or um, let's see what I have. Oh yeah, I have green peas. Okay, I have frozen green peas. So what I'm gonna do? When I put my spices, my onion, my garlic, I'm gonna season the peas. And once they're nice and kind of a little bit soft, I'm gonna take them out, cook the um, cauliflower, and then throw the uh, the beans at the end. Because otherwise, I don't want any pale, you know, dull looking green peas. All right, I bought three bags of the um, cauliflower. I'm going to, oh, Lulu, I think she does that so I can get her inside. Okay. And also coconut milk. I always like to put a little bit of coconut milk in my rice. Are you doing this so I can get you back in here, Lulu? You better not. You better not. Thank you, smart. I am smarter. I'm the human. Stop it. <laughs> and also, keeping in mind that your cauliflower is gonna have some some liquid, so you gotta be very careful because cauliflower is a vegetable. It doesn't take long to cook. If you add a lot of water to your uh, cauliflower, it's gonna get mushy and it's not gonna be what you want. All right. Let me, I have some a quarter of an onion. So I am going to use that. Yeah, soften it up a little bit. Cauliflower. Yeah. All right. Let me get my eggplant to start cooking. I'll t I'm turning the heat up and then I'm going to turn it down when I start cooking. All right. So that's good. One more. I remember around the holidays, I wanted some cauliflower so bad and they were so expensive. Well, now with supply chain and everything going on in the world, who knows? You know what I keep saying? When you start hearing about supply chain disruption, make sure you have some stuff in your house, like for survival. The one thing I don't have, I don't have a generator and I don't have like a gas powered something. So you need to have things like, that's why they say get, um, you know, can good because if you can't cook, 
then canned good is what you're gonna need. I have a lot of pasta, I have bread. Um, but again, they're not cooked, so I don't know if that's gonna help me or not. Ooh, que bueno. Now, you know, coconut is so expensive and then they give you a can of coconut milk for like a dollar or something. Makes you wonder if it's true coconut milk. <laughs> Okay, good. Alrighty then. So, let's do the oil. This is my avocado oil. I have to go get some more. I like it. Yeah, maybe two tablespoons. I'm going to <clears throat> chop my onions. I tell you, boy, there's so much on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but it's so funny. So I think I downloaded it. But you know what I'm finding? It's like all these downloads are using a lot of memory on my phone. So I've taken off a lot of the uh, apps. They have the equivalent of uh, Shark Tank on this um, channel, but it is for like young minority kids who are entrepreneurs and are looking for funding. Now see, if I had money, that is something I would wanna do. I always said, if I became rich, I would help single moms, give them a car, a decent place to live where they don't have to worry about paying rent you know because being a single mom has to be one of the toughest jobs in the world you know so if we can lend a hand that's what I would like to do that's why when I see people the other day I was watching this program and they have this famous ball player and they say he has a house in almost every major city and i'm thinking okay what is the rationale behind that because when you buy a big old mansion you have to maintain it there is maintenance utilities and all kinds of stuff insurance why would you want to do that that is just too much headache if you're doing it you can only be in one place at a time okay now I would love to have like a condo in Maui, one in California. But when you have 10, 12 houses, um, okay. To each his own. I have to practice what I preach and not, you know, criticize people for their choices. But I don't understand why you need 12 homes in different cities that you have to maintain. It makes no sense to me. But that's me. smells so good in here you guys all right my uh vegetables are boiling so i'm turning the heat down and this one i'm going to turn way down because i haven't even crushed my garlic yet of course you have to have garlic oh okay you know i think i love garlic more than a lot of other people. I do not know why. I just do. Mm -hmm. 
And they have this thing about people drinking water. My goodness. I tell you. I've become even more impatient about certain things. I was listening to this program. And these people were on the radio just saying absolutely nothing of value. <laughs> and I'm thinking, seriously? You wasting oxygen on that? You know, they're trying to be funny, but they're not. And I was like, oh, boy. And that's why, you know, I don't watch TV because I have I get bored so easily nowadays with people saying nothing. Oh, what a waste. I said a waste of oxygen. All right. So let's. Press some garlic in here. I love this little thing. Well, why didn't I think about it first? Hmm? I could be a zillionaire now. You know, there are a couple of things that I really would like to develop, but I really don't know how about about to go about it. I mean, people are. This is some. These are items that people are using every day, but I have yet to find one that I like. And I'm like, I know what I would like. So, oh, running out of time to do all the stuff I want to do. Yeah, but I find that when you have a job. You're just so limited because the bulk of your time is owed to the person who's paying your salary. So it's almost like you're a slave. All right, turn the heat down. All right, we're gonna put some green beans in here. Green peas. Okay, I think that's enough. Uh, you've heard me talk a lot about um, the vegetable base. I'm out. And contrary to what I said last time, I forgot to order some from Amazon. So, oh my goodness, how do I remember? So, but I have some beef flavoring, so I'm going to use some of that. But remember, if you're vegan, you don't have to do it. Okay. But this recipe with the um, cauliflower, definitely vegan. Okay. Just use a vegetable base or vegetable stock instead. I'm going to put a little water to thin out the, um, to break the peas. So my bucket list this year, you know, some people have vision board. I have two major things that I already have on my board and I'm working towards. Another thing that I want to do, I want to minimize my life. So I need to go around the house and just take out everything that I don't believe I need. So I'm putting some thymes down because you know, I like thyme almost as much as I like garlic. Okay, oh, nice, come on, come on. So pepper, I love pepper too. But you know, I think the beef uh, is going to darken my cauliflower. Mm. It would have looked better with the um, with the chicken. I mean, with the vegetable. 
we keep everything pale but that's okay don't do as I do just do as I say <laughs> you heard that before right from your mama you know sometimes I think of my mom You know, sometimes when people age, they just change. And they turn, sometimes, not all the time, they turn into this. You're talking about somebody who was very independent, and then all of a sudden they turn into this very needy kind of person and not taking into consideration that you as an adult. You have your life to live, right? And I think my mom, bless her soul, she, something like that happened to her. And I think it made life miserable for her because she could not adjust to, this is a different season. You know, your kids are adults and they have their own life. She, used to, she would complain about, oh, I haven't seen so-and-so. I'm like, but they have a job and, you know, if something is wrong, yeah, people are going to make time to come visit you and stuff. But if you're okay, life goes on. But she just could not understand that. It's, she felt that, you know, her life came first. So I think it makes it difficult in terms of relationship to your aging parents if they just have that kind of a attitude about you know about life so i tell you everybody struggles to adjust but talking about the movement you know i'm not opening the meat thing because i want the heat that's why the um the cover is there and the heat stays in so it's gonna take less time to cook because it's like almost pressure cooking, right? Okay, so let's, because you know, if the peas are just a little bit softer, it will be fine. Mm -mm, they're good? All right, so I'm gonna take the peas out and then I'm going to add the cauliflower and then add a little, little bit of um, a little bit of coconut oil, coconut milk. Okay. All right. Cauliflower. And again, I have to be mindful of the water content. I hope I remember that it's just cauliflower so I don't feel guilty when I'm eating. Thinking like I'm eating rice, which I love. Oh my God. I'm Caribbean, of course. We eat rice every day. But I can't. Not only is it bad for, you know, for uh, in terms of carbs, but you know, you eat a high carb diet as you get older, you will develop diabetes. So you have to be careful. I'm telling you, oh, maybe it's too much. I should have had only two. But, but it's cauliflower again, it's veggies. Yeah, I was gonna say, in my practice, when I go to to see the patients now, last week, they uh, we had a lot of new patients. That's probably why I burn out and I need a day off. Because when I'm, when you give me 15, 16 new patients, it takes me 
three or more hours to go through the records and see what's happening with the patient. I have to read the HNP. I have to find the information I need because sometimes uh, the hospital doesn't send all the information that you need. Here we go. Mm, ooh, I like this one. Wow, this is so creamy. Some of them, they have like a water content at the, at the bottom, but not this one. Mm, mm, I like that. Maybe I can put a little bit more. Mm, this is so nice. Now you see, it's already getting low. You know, see how it was high earlier? It's already looking low. So all the spices are already in the peas. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the water is coming out of them. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're good. So yeah, I was talking earlier about how excited I am to see the young women getting to the point where they understand that this American dream of working, working, working to get more and more and more is a trap. A trap that they don't want to get caught in. Right? Because you go and you get the big house, you get the car, so that's two payments. You gotta pay home insurance. They're taking insurance out of your check if you if you get health insurance through an employer. You get life insurance, you get all the utilities, right? Car insurance, house insurance. Then the kids, you know, you have to buy food and gas. Let me tell you, you have gone down a rabbit hole of debt. And then you feel like you're never going to get out of debt. First of all, when you buy a house, by the time you finish paying for that house, you've paid three times the cost of that house over 30 years. That is insane, okay? And whoever designed that, they designed it to keep you in debt. And when you owe people money, you are in bondage, okay? That's all there is to it. You can call it, you can beautify it all you want, but it is bondage. Debt is bondage. So right now, I only have my house, but even then, I should have planned better. I should not have a mortgage at this time, this stage in my life. I should not. That was bad planning on my part, okay? So you don't need to buy a bigger house. If you can refinance your house for 15 years, do it because 15 years is a whole lot better than 30. And then when your kids are grown, they're out of the house. Don't keep adding stuff. Don't go buy, you know, a more a fancier car. Don't go, you know, keep plan and budget for vacation, for time off with your family. Uh, the things that are going to make you healthier, okay? I'm telling you, we just don't do the math. We get caught up in all that. And what our friends are doing, people we hang out with, people we we work with. And then the thing is, they're not paying you bills. And the difference between Americans and Europeans, I used to always say, oh, Europeans take four to six weeks holiday every year. And they don't take it in like two, three days. They take it all at one time. So when they say I'm on holiday, it means I'm gone. Don't look for me, I'm gone. But we Americans, we feel like if we're not there, the world is going to stop. That the job is not going to get done. Golly. There is something that is uh, circulating on my nursing platforms. It says, you did not get a job 
to sell your soul. You got a job to make a living, okay? So live your life because your employer, you just a number for, to them. You are. And if you believe that you're the only one who can do this job, that no one else can do it as good as you do, you're fooling yourself. Don't do that. Get smart. Live your life. So these women are leaving their jobs, selling their cars, selling their homes, and going somewhere where they can, lead, they can live in peace. A lot of them are becoming digital nomads where they can do their job because now with COVID, it shows the world that you really can work from home. I remember in the 90s when they started talking about uh, telehealth, it was like, ooh, ooh. Now all of a sudden, boom, it's in your face. If you want to talk to your doctor at 8 o'clock at night, you better be ready for a telehealth visit. So people are becoming sensitized to the changes. And those of us who are stuck in the old days, the old ways, and unwilling to change, you're going to struggle. So if you can do a job from the comfort of your home, and if you can take your job somewhere and do it on the beach, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? And that's what is happening. This is what the movement is right now. And I am all for it. I'm just like clapping. So I was saying earlier, this little 24 year old said, I'm quitting my job because my kids are like four and two. I want to have another baby. I want to be home for, with my kids and I want to downsize. And I'm like, I was so in awe because I'm thinking when I was 24, I was smacking that line, that bubble of, you know, you got to do, you got to do, you got to push, you got to achieve, you got to conquer, you got to do this, got to be on this board and that board. Your kids have to play two, three sports and you have to be running, 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 running. You're running those kids ragged. Why? Because Johnny next door is doing t-ball and soccer. So my kids should be doing the same thing. No, the kids want to rest. You know, I applaud my daughter because she's a millennial and she's like, I'm going to sleep. I'm not going to be working this hard. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> she got it right. So we have to applaud our young people for their understanding that there is more to life than just work. Okie dokie. So let's go to the legume and see what's happening here. All right. So, oops. Yeah. All right. So now, mm. oh boy, we need more water. This burner is hot, and I have to always watch it. Okay. So, yep, you see, I have cut the... Um... The eggplant, and it cooked fast. Okay, okay. So, I'm mashing a little bit. And then the, the tomato paste is showing its pretty color. So now when, it, when you have all that orange, you want to balance it out with some greens. And that's where you, you would put your, um, your spinach. Not yet, because it's not ready yet. So now I'm going to add my okra. Because the okra is going to take about 5-10 minutes to cook. And it's a good time right now. To put some okra in. Oh yeah. Okay, now the okra. I gotta try not to handle it too much, okay? Because it is kind of delicate, and I don't want it to 
pull apart. <laughs> that looks so pretty. Doesn't that look good, you guys? Come on. You know you want to say it looks pretty. Okay. That looks amazing. All right. So what I have left to add to this, I'm not going to put the uh, spinach, although I could towards the end when it's really done. Now, this is your bouquet garni. You want to make sure all that flavor goes in there. Okay. Nice. So I'm going to taste. Because I do have the, um, the broccoli to add towards the end. And of course, broccoli doesn't take a whole lot, lot of time to cook either. All right, let's get ready to taste. Okay, this is where you're going to be making sure your flavors are on point. Okay, definitely need some acid. So I have lemon. Remember, lemon juice always brings flavors out. Okay, ooh, nice. All right. I might even add a little bit of of the base. Oh, I wish it wasn't beef, but that's what I have. So if you are going to do some vegetable soup, yeah, that beef base is perfect for that. Because, you know, you make vegetable uh, stock by cooking beef bones and then adding the vegetable in. Adobo. The salt is still not. I might have to add a little bit of salt in a minute because you know I didn't put any salt. I just used the adobo. Mm -mm -mm. That is so pretty. because we want the okra to cook, all right? Now let's go back to our cauliflower rice. You see? Uh -huh. It is done. That's perfect. Look at that. The consistency is what you want. Doesn't it look like rice, right? So you have to take into account the amount of liquid that you have in there. So when somebody says, oh, I went to eat at this restaurant and the food had no taste, and I'm like, what kind of cook cooks and doesn't taste their food? You gotta taste your food. And if the taste is not where it needs to be, then you doctor it up, okay? Definitely needed to get my uh, vegetable base and not the beef. Because you see how it darkened my uh, cauliflower? Okay. Let's see, I added the peas back in there. So now I'm gonna be working on taste. Mm. 
It's really good. I don't think it needs anything. Wow. The salt, everything is balanced. It doesn't need any acid. It's fine. So, because I'm not vegan, I'm going to top it with a little butter. But if you're vegan, right here, you're done. Your cauliflower rice. Mm -mm. With coconut milk. Don't forget the coconut milk. Wow. Perfecto. All right, a little bit of butter. Mante au beurre. And I did not have... Um, I did not put a bouquet garni, but I have some thyme in there. So this is your coconut rice. I mean, your cauliflower rice with coconut. So turning the heat off, this one is done. Boom, shakalaka. Okay. Now, if I was using black beans, I would have done the black beans before I put the cauliflower in and then the coconut milk. But because I did not want my peas to be totally brown, even though my cauliflower looks brown because of the base that I use. So if you use vegetable base, it's gonna be a little bit lighter. But, yeah. Wow, look at that. That looks beautiful. A pot of cauliflower rice. All right. Perfect. We're done here. All right, so let. Now I'm not gonna cover this because if I cover it, it's gonna cook some more, it's gonna get mushy. All right, so you wanna let it um, cool off. Oops. Okay. If you had uh, spinach, you probably would wait a little bit until you're totally done, and then you would add your spinach, okay? But this, look at this pot of food. So that's going to last me a few days. Now, you know that broccoli doesn't take any time to cook. So I think at this point, I can remove the bouquet. It should have done its work by now. Mm. Are you a cook that you're always wiping and doing that when you're cooking? I am. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit because see that? I don't want all that in here, too much liquid, so. I'm controlling my heat. So once you finish with this, you wanna be sure your broccoli is nice and green. That's what's gonna pro provide this contrast. Then you're done, baby. You can eat this by itself. You can pair it with that broccoli rice. You could put it next to white rice. In my country, we, we use it with um, white rice and then bean sauce. We used to do black bean sauce. We used to do pinto bean sauce. We do the white bean sauce. This is something that, legume is something that people love in my country. And at this time too, if you had some crabs, throw them in here. Crabs don't take long to cook. Okay, add more time. So now I'm going to taste, and if I need to add a little heat, this is when I'm going to add the uh, the jalapeno. For me, you don't have to do it for you. 
and we'll definitely add um, some butter in here. Now, I think I need a little bit of salt. Make sure we mix everything together. The acid is perfect. I don't need any more acid. Mm. Yep, you see, the broccoli is already done. <laughs> mm. Oh my god. Herbe de Provence. You know, I went to the store looking for red food coloring and I couldn't find any oh my god so I think I have to order it online I did not it's not even the holidays I did not realize what a hot item that was wow okay so one last taste and then it's time for Monte Aubert bit of um, put the heat up a bit get rid of a little bit of this liquid <laughs> oh it's so pretty oh my god Whew. I'm getting warm temperature so we go from 55 to like 80 something Crazy weather. I was gonna say a few vegan. Well, this one, does, not for vegan. I have goat in there. All right. And I think I'm gonna add the jalapeno at the end, just to add a little heat. And then we are done, 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 done. Oh my goodness. I did it. Well, I got some work I have to do on the computer. So. Remember, if you had scotch bonnet peppers, then you won't need to add the jalapeno. Because you know, when you're a cook, you improvise. When you don't have one thing, you add something else to make up for it. Okay. Two more minutes and we're done. Right, guys this video has been long enough i hope you enjoyed this session of making legume with cauliflower rice one more look at the rice here it is and then we have legume okay au revoir à la prochaine